little bit. Get back over into the code. Uh, so... I'm not sure if this error is coming... I mean, it must be coming from something to do with what we're doing. Multiple input base components instead of a form control. Um, we do have at least... We, did, we didn't get uh, the same kind of error that we were getting before, so there's that. Hmm. Um, let's take a look at this. So if we... Well, that's nice. They, they, they act together. That's kind of what I would expect. Although I do want them to be kind of in line and smaller and, and other things. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the DOM here. So we have an input, and we have movie input base, form control. Oh, wait, what's the error? What was the error? Multiple input base components instead of a form control. This creates visual inconsistencies. inconsistencies. Use only one input base. Okay, so it's saying that if we really want to have multiple inputs like this, each one needs a form control. Um, so maybe when I said before that the, instead of using text field, we should use input. Wait, 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 wait. But they, they literally show doing this, having multiple inputs together. So good job. Um, API, so what is, let's look at form control. So form control provides context for form inputs, yeah, form label, form helper, help, blah, blah, blah. form helper text, right? So, um, that, that is one of the things I thought that this was going to help us with is having like this shared between the inputs. Only one input base can be used within a form control because it creates visual inconsistencies. For example, only one input can be focused at the same time. The state shouldn't be shared. Okay. So what if I have multiple inputs? What should I do? Hmm. The demos. Text field is composed of smaller components that you can leverage directly. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So Again, I, I, I want to go back to using, to see if we can use box. There's no reason why, why we shouldn't be able to import that. I, I guess we're, we're changing the style that we're using for the imports as well. Uh, I also want to, let's see, what is it, alt. Shift down arrow uh, that duplicates. Um, Alt down arrow. There we go. Let's keep our imports organized here. What import are we missing now? Nothing apparently. Oh, input. Yes. That's not the right input. From at movie. Uh, there we go.
Okay. Uh, one thing. I need to go back and read the docs on this note. What's the difference between these two styles of imports? If you're using ES6 modules and a bundler that supports tree shaking. So does V do that? Say if we use named imports and still get optimized bundle automatically. So we do this. Well, let's let's leave that as is, uh, and that that's different. It's definitely different. Are we still getting well a browser freeze freeze for one thing? <laughs> hmm. I wonder if it's it's something specific with like the app or is it something like a combination of extensions or why why is this behaving this way is something i don't know um but what i'm wondering is is it going to give me an error about the input base no it's still the same thing about Function components cannot be given refs. Check the render method of duration input. Duration field. Oh, okay. So what it's saying is, is that something that we're passing in is a ref. So something, maybe something returned from this hook something is a ref. And so it's giving us a warning about that. Now, which thing? I don't know. I mean, honestly, we could probably just unpack and manually pass in the appropriate props rather than spreading, and then it would be potentially clearer. But it's just a warning. I'll deal with it at some point. Uh, the one thing, okay, so I wanted to know, are we still getting errors about multiple input base components instead of a form control? So, <laughs> oh, I see. So there's one form control now for the entire page. Okay, so I think the real solution to this is we just need to wrap each input in its own form controller. Form control. Not to be confused with the form controller. So apparently, uh, there is a parent form control somewhere. Not here. Somewhere in the uh, component tree. I we could probably see that if we looked at the the dev tools, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now because I'm pretty sure I know how to fix this. Uh, it's so helpful adding that closing closing tag. Probably don't actually want that on paste, but uh, yeah. All right. So, what if I just close this? Hey. All right. So now they they should focus independently. Uh, now we can kind of maybe deal with styling a little bit. Hmm. There we go. Attribute, add attribute. Um, how do I want to do this? There isn't really like a um, width or a, a length. A length would make sense if it was like a text input. All 
that's not even a thing because it would be like max length or something. Uh, we can we can pass in some styling. Or uh, what I wanted to do with the box actually is do styling there. I don't know if that makes sense. What are also the props for form control actually? While I'm, while I'm looking at things, that is a, a it's a long list. Um, <laughs> what do I want to do here? Like I could use common props to pass uh, the SX prop. So, definitely want to want to just say 100 pixels. What does this look like? That is something. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that is something. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to have a, uh, what is it called? Um, maybe that's not something we could do on an input. Oh, end dormant. That's what it's called. Uh, and so this will be like, <laughs> just put H. This is effectively recreate with uh, with elements the the values that that were in the ISO eighty six hundred one. Um, yeah, I mean, I think from from context that'll that'll be clear enough. I'm gonna do the same same thing here. Uh, minute and end adornment. Second, uh, and then for milliseconds, what we'll do is we'll do start adornment of dot. Yeah, you got it. Okay, that is something. Um, we probably want a little bit of margin left. Yeah, text align right, sure. That that looks, I, I think that'll be good. Yeah. Except for the last one, in which it looks kind of weird, but let's get rid of the start adornment and then it won't look so weird. Instead, we can do end adornment MS. If I'm gonna do that, because it would look weird if it was capitalized, so I think I'll just change the other ones to be lowercase as well. Okay. Uh, let's increase the component width. Okay. That That's good. What if, what if this was auto? What does that look like? Oh, that's too, can we make this resize to be kind of a minimal size? Uh, let me, let me pop out the dev tools here. There we go. So why? Mm. Display block. So if this is like display inline block or something. That does not help. 
All right, these are each wrapped in a separate div, yeah? So the issue isn't the input necessarily, as it is the, the divs that we are wrapping in. So input base, which is inline flex. Uh, box sizing, width auto. Okay, so then form control inline flex display flex direction column uh, nope that's that does not work that way hmm okay and then the parents Okay, if we set display flex on the box, that is something. And then, if I change this back to its default, just to get, okay, so that doesn't change that. That's not helpful. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it would be kind of nice if I actually knew how flex worked. I feel like I've I've known and forgotten a few times. Like that doesn't do what I want. Uh, I mean, I guess if we're in this situation anyway. I got rid of this, and then I said, what are the props on box? Oh, we have like align properties. Align items. What, what does this do? Might have to refresh to get rid of any of the, the changes I did to the CSS there. Oh, I think lunch might be here. Is that what I'm seeing? Okay. Well. Okay, movie box. Okay. Um through SX. Yep. That and then yeah. What does that do? Ooh, that's better. I mean it's close to what we had before, but now we're not explicitly setting the size of the individual fields, which is nice. Um this is much easier to look at too. <laughs> so this is basically all the information that is visualized here. Um, it could be cool to have a way to like see, all right, well, that's, that's kind of outside of the scope of the, this, this input though. Now, I think I'm, I'm just about out of time for today because I want to, I want to get my lunch before it gets cold. But, um, the last thing we need to do is make it so that we can actually change the values here. Uh, so let's do that. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to, yeah, yeah, I, I plan to. 
I'm probably gonna work on some, this some more between streams. Um, and what I'll, what I likely will do is whatever progress I make between streams, I'll um, probably share some updates in the Discord, uh, but also just kind of recap things next stream, next coding stream. Um, right, but let's 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 get this thing done, right? So what we need is we need a um, like an on change, like a handle change function. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, 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 this is very similar to what the, um, what Copilot suggested to us before. I'm missing a, a import for React. Um, where it's, it's going to be a function that takes the name, like the name of like hours, minutes, seconds, or milliseconds, and then gives a function that will then handle the event. So, I mean, this is wrong. What we want to do is we want to say this, and then whatever value we get, we parse int, and we put that, and we replace hours, minutes, or seconds, or milliseconds with this value, and then we call on change, uh, which is not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to then um, well, we have a function actually to take the object and turn it to back into ISO 8601 duration. Uh, yeah, new value. Yeah, so that should be good. Cannot invoke an object which is possibly undefined. So un unchanged might not exist. Uh, also, we can unchange. There you go. Do it that way. Uh, what we can say is, um, well, we can do a few different things. But the easiest thing is probably just to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then we have one too many parents. No. What's the problem? Oh, it, okay, we can't do that. Uh, we can just do this. So that does that um, and says argument of type string is not access assignable to parameter of type. Uh, change event, right. So the thing is, is that the on change that we're passing into duration field needs to also look like a React uh, event. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, there you go, oops. Okay, what are you unhappy about? Uh, value name is missing the following properties. Yes, I don't care. Uh, what we can do is we can we can just say okay, it's it's this event, but then we've replaced target. Uh, and then, yep, there you go. So now the type will be compatible. It will actually look like an event, except the value will be this. Uh, restored ISO 8601 string representing the value. Um, yeah. So one thing this doesn't do is this does not, um, do a thing that I really wanted to do with this, which is that if we increase the value of seconds to like 60, it should increase the number of minutes and set seconds back to, to zero. To do that, um, 
we we could do that yeah we could do that um we could do that inside effectively do that inside of iso 8601 duration right by by renormalizing hours minutes and seconds and milliseconds um first <laughs> um actually is that necessary is that necessary right because if whatever iso 8601 value we get here um that on re-render will get parsed through this function and that will normalize the value back to hours and minutes and seconds and milliseconds so we might get that functionality out of the box just by the kind of the the relationship where, where we're like passing the value through this function and back into this function to re-render the UI. Um, and then what we want to do is we can't really pass handle change through common props because we need to like invoke it with the name of the field. So we just do this here and yeah, it, it can it can figure out what that's supposed to be. On change, there you go. And then this one. Now, it doesn't like this. Key of type of value. Mm, so instead, if we go back to this, um, it's right here, and we export this interface. Then what we should be able to do is we should say key of duration. The station. Uh, there we go. And we should be able to import that now. Yeah. And then that makes everything happy. And then maybe just maybe so if we increase this to a thousand, okay. If I change this to, ooh, uh, I don't think it likes me typing into the field. We should probably sort that out. Okay, interesting. A hundred. Interesting. Let's get something. 58. Aha! So that part does work. I'm not sure what's going on with the milliseconds. We may have to figure that out. That's that's a bug. Okay. Anyway, um, that is at least something. Some progress for today. Uh, of all the things I wanted to do, this was like the first thing. <laughs> uh, create custom time duration input. Uh, it, it mostly works. Uh, use that in the silence detection result. We're doing that. Um, the last thing we need to do for this part of the workflow is to create a button, to add a button in this UI um, so that once we've selected the segments that are like splitting the episode. Oh, interesting. Why? Uh, yeah, the panning here. Oh, right, right, right. So I, yeah, there should be four. I don't know what's up with that. That's that's wrong. Um, yeah, it should be like that. Anyway, have a button here so that we can create records. Um, four episodes between these breaks. Um, and so there, there's some work that we'll need to do to do that. Um, actually, this is kind of the perfect kind of work to do off stream because it's 
like stuff we've already done, right? So I need to create the um, like the API, the credit API for episodes and hook all that up. And we've done that a bunch already for like the video clips and the streams. So twice. Uh, so I, I can work on the third one. Uh, all right. So I think that's going to be it for today, though. Uh, we should do a raid. 